Hey guys, what's going on? This is Coach Dom with the Strength Agenda. Got a question from TikTok the other day asking about what the best lifts are for throwing. So I figured I'd take the opportunity to create another, a little bit of a longer form video for you guys, kind of break it down upper body, lower body, and Olympic lifts in terms of during the season and from like most important in terms of like biggest carryover to least amount of carryover. So hopefully this helps. I'm uh, gonna try not to get too in depth in it, um, but just wanna make sure that I give you guys some of the information and, and, and present it to you in a way that makes sense for you and your training in order to allow you to get some good solid training in the weight room but also make sure that you're getting good throws in your practices and in your games biggest thing i need you guys to understand though is that during the season in particular and even in your off season the lifting is supplement to your throws in the highland games the biggest thing we want to know is how far can you throw so if your lifts are super high you are a super strong individual you can out squat you can out dead and out press everybody else it doesn't matter if you're not out throwing those individuals as well so once your lifts get to a certain parameter in terms of ranges um like for instance on the back squat i think a 500 pound back squat is more than enough strength to throw far in the highland games as long as you're doing it properly um you don't need to continue to push that back squat to ungodly amounts yes a stronger athlete is a better athlete but at the end of the day if your lifts are a detriment to your throws it's not going to matter so let's go ahead and get into it in terms of upper body um my lifts go importance of this push press number one you are standing creating hip drive reaching full lockout overhead so push press is my uh, most important and exercise upper body wise for throwing then from there strict press again same thing you are standing on the ground you are creating a brace you are driving through the floor and engaging that full lockout overhead the reason i like push press and strict press over uh, more flat pressing exercises is simply because of the more uh, more musculature that you are engaging in terms of once you're reaching that full lockout overhead you are incorporating more of the upper back and the shoulders your traps all that stuff even a little bit of your mid back in terms of engaging and reaching that full lockout position so you're just working more muscles with the overhead presses versus your flat presses um, and then the third most important exercise I think is some sort of a board press whether you're using a bench block whether you're using a pad whatever you're using a shortened range of motion and the reason I say board press versus a floor press is because I'd like you to have a little bit of a bounce on it so when you hit that bottom you're incorporating a stretch reflex reacting to the bounce and being able to drive right back out into it so for upper body push press strict press uh, some sort of a board press with a bounce for lower body this is going to be kind of controversial depending on who you're talking to but mine in terms of importance i would uh, use the back squat in terms of not necessarily number one but a variation of the back squat a full range of motion uh, i like high bar in particular because it relies more on the quads and the hips than anything else then i would go with a box squat done with a power lifting wide traditional stance with a vertical shin incorporating more posterior chain and then sumo deadlift and if i were to put in kind of like a 3a 3b type setup i would go sumo deadlifts or trap bar deadlifts at the end of the day we are trying to create more strength in the hips and the posterior chain those three exercises in my opinion give you the biggest bang for your buck now we are talking about the olympic lift variations not everybody likes the olympic lifts but the three variations that i'm going to tell you right now are three variations that i have been able to get any sort of an athlete to be able to do with just a little bit of cueing and coaching so first and foremost i believe muscle snatches from either the hip or the hang those have the best carryover because they teach you to get to that power position reach that full extension and then you are continuing to lift through that extension there is no pulling under which we aren't going to be doing on the lifts but they're also going to require a very strong back and posterior chain to be able to incorporate second lift is going to be a either a clean or a snatch high pull the reason i like these i like to set up a pvc pipe or a band of a somewhere around chest height and then you are pulling into it trying to hit the bar off of this apparatus again requires a strong back strong posterior chain and you're working on that violent hip extension at the top and then the third exercise if you just need to move some lighter weights is a hip snatch and this is literally just as it sounds bar starts in the hip crease you are driving you are pulling yourself underneath it when you reach full extension and lockout but it's not as much as if you were doing a full on clean or a snatch so again to reiterate with the olympic lifts uh muscle snatch from the hip or the hang a clean or snatch high pull preferably from blocks two to three inches off the ground reaching full extension into an apparatus and then third is a hip snatch from the hip leg drive extend up and over into full lockout so hopefully these help you guys kind of pick out your main exercises in terms of which ones will have the best carryover to your lifts any other questions keep them coming and until then happy lifting